Welcome to Kidabra's weekly webinar. This is Patrick Halstead, and today I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for joining. We uh, are um, going to do another webinar on dashboards and uh, talking about um, how to measure how fast your process is, is uh, going and what the engine speed is and all the other things using two different techniques. Today is part one of a two-part series, and we're going to be showing you how to do simple tabular dashboards uh, using form technology, believe it or not. Uh, Kidabra Forms, and then next week uh, we're going to be showing you how to do, this, do more advanced things with Power BI, and we'll have a preview, a demo of the Power BI stuff today as well. Um, I'd like to uh, quickly launch a poll and ask you a quick question before we get started, and uh, you should see this question here. It should, how many of your business processes do you currently have dashboarded, or how, how do you have, are you measuring? Um, so we've got a, just a quick, quick question here, and it looks like uh, we've got a couple of responses coming in. Uh, thank you for uh, answering this quick questionnaire proposal. So everyone has something, um, but but we're all in the sum category. Um, there's about uh, it looks like about close to 20% in the good number, and a little less than that in the uh, majority of, the, of them. So thanks for the quick um, show of listening there. Um, so. Today we have uh, Don Frack is with us. Don has been a long time uh, Kidabra dashboard master, and I'm just going to do a quick few slides, and then we're going to switch to him for the demo. Uh, so once again, today's topic, we're really trying to measure your business process, and that means measuring uh, you know, how fast uh, people are turning over their commitments. If you've got a form process, typically you have some kind of an approval workflow. Uh, you need to measure how fast people are actually doing their jobs and um, because your metrics matter and the speed at which you can turn things around um, you know increases the efficiency of the overall organization right um, so we're going to show how to query a workflow history so we're going to obviously need to keep history on your flow on your process in order to measure it so we're going to have but once you've got it so we'll show you how to you know we obviously assume that you have a form that is storing history and I'll talk about a few links you can go to for past webinars we've done showing how to do that. But today's topic isn't really talking about how to add the history, it's more talking about how to measure it. Um, we have done lots of webinars on how to add history sections to your forms. We just did training two weeks ago and talked about it again. Um, so the first topic is to how to query that history. Uh, the second topic we're going to show is how to, to display it and using a, a cool technique. And the third uh, topic is just filtering and sorting and how to, how to do pagination. I, I want to do a shout out to Shane Harvey for and thank him for inspiring us on today's topic. Um, Shane has been a long time webinar <laughs> devotee and uh, we're really happy Shane to have this idea from you last week. Um, previously we've done this webinar, we've done a webinar on dashboards 11 times, can you believe that? Um, over the years so since we started recording, these are the YouTube links uh, we'll obviously share the slide deck at the end. Um, different technologies. So last time we did a webinar was on Power BI. Next week's webinar, I hope, will be on Power BI querying SQL um, and show you how to do that. Um, we've done, as you can see, part one, part two. This is in reverse chronological order. So we've done a lot of webinars. Um, take a look at our page. Um, we've got an education page here, and you can just go to this link, you know, Kidabra.com, and on the top there's there's education, and you can actually uh, um, look at past webinars and search this list, and you can see I've just highlighted a few of them. Um, and then we've also done a lot of training on, on dashboards in the past, including this most recent class, which Don actually uh, conducted the, not the training for the dashboard. And this is really kind of like an advanced topic today, showing how to do dashboard details, and it's built on a topic we covered two weeks ago in our training class is actually exactly two weeks ago, I believe, so that date must be wrong. Um, and we covered it, and you can download the lab, um, and it's got extensive documentation on how to create the foundation for what we're going to show today. Okay, so why do we care? Why do we care about measuring our process? Well, we want it to be less of a bottleneck for other processes. We also um, want to make sure that there's a, it's efficient so it's not spending a lot of the company's money. So you need to look at what's impacting those metrics. And typically we're going to take a look at today a support process. 
So in the support process and in many processes, it's items that are overdue. So it's tickets that are open too long or it's something that needs approval and it hasn't been approved yet, but there's an agreement between the, you know, the team that it's going to be one week or two week turnaround. So you're looking for, and some, sometimes you have a policy, it has to be signed within 60 days. We have customers that have those kinds of policies. So you're really looking at what is it in your process that is, is causing you to look bad. <laughs> And that's this first chunk here on the left. Um, and then, of course, what do you want to know next? Next, you need to figure out, okay, well, who's causing the problem? Because this is typically a human, not a computer. Sometimes you have a bug. But in general, it's going to be one of your, your colleagues who's on vacation or whatever, not, not noticing that they've got notifications. Um, so you want to identify who's holding it up. And this is the, what you're doing with the dashboard, obviously. Um, so the dashboard is going to show you something you're measuring, <laughs> whatever it is that impacts your process in terms of days, um, who it is that's, that's holding up those tickets. And then hopefully, what we'll show next week, and uh, we'll do a preview today, um, well, we don't want to just you know, make the person responsible and target them if it's, if it's a one-off. If they're on vacation, give them a break. So you want to look at patterns. And so once you can find a pattern of, of some some bottleneck in the process. And usually, like I said, it's a human, but um, it may be that the form's too hard to fill out, and so you need to interview all the people that are holding things up because they're not sure why it's taking so long and improve the form. Um, but you want to identify the, either that focus group that's going to give you that feedback or the people who are actually holding up the process. And I ask them, why is it taking so long? Because they are the same. They're the focus group and they're the, the bottleneck. Um, and then you want to take action on it by giving them some data, if it is indeed not a form issue. You know, we fix the form and then you measure it again, give them some data showing them that there's room for improvement. Okay, so that's the quick intro. Any questions so far? Don, hopefully you've been seeing my screen and the recording is going well and uh, I'm just, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to switch to you as presenter, Don, and I want to uh, once again uh, let everyone know that today's webinar would not be possible unless it was for Don. He, he's actually done all of the the prep work on this and uh, um, and all and this, the slides were done by Kirby, <laughs> but uh, but Don did all the hard heavy lifting with with regards to the uh, um, the demo and uh, and Kauda did the second one, but I didn't do anything. So Don, can you uh, can you share your screen? Thanks, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Oh, my name is Don Frack, and yeah, uh, I've been. Uh, with Kadabra for quite some time now, and uh, I'd, I'm happy to show you how uh, our our dashboards are. So, um, for the for the demo, I'll be showing you our customer support dashboard. So, um, this is what it looks like. So here you can see that we have some tabs over over here, and we're using a, a, a CSS styling to have. Oops. Uh, I need to refresh it. So uh, we used CSS styling to make the tabs look prettier. And uh, as you can see, it uh, loads pretty quickly, about three seconds. And here I can quickly see whatever is assigned to me. So I have here a couple of tickets. And uh, you can uh, browse through other info by using this tab and see all the active tickets and see, you can also see what is result over here. Now, um, we also have this uh, arrow, which is a collapsible section. So you can get more info out of uh, what is being uh, primarily shown. So here you have some additional info for the case number. It opens up a link to, um, uh, the fog bugs case, and here you have other info here for the phone numbers and email. And also below is the ticket history, so you can see what has uh, transpired over the over the weeks. So this is great, Tom. We will be fuzzing out the uh, PII here for the video upload. Uh, so if you're <laughs> worried about uh, sharing their information um, on the call, don't, don't be too concerned. We, we don't have a lot of tickets uh, 
this week. We're still in the, in the aftermath of Labor Day. Um, but uh, um, thanks for those of you who oh. see your name here. <laughs> we'll make sure that your name is obscured when we record uh, and post it on YouTube. Um, Don, this is really great. This is an improvement. Uh, what I'm really impressed by is how fast it loaded. And you're in the Philippines, so it's downloading all that content from west coast of the United States to you and your browser in close to Manila, right? Right. How long did it take you to put this together? Um, uh, for this dashboard, about uh, probably around 10, 10 hours. That's not too well. bad. But, That's great. Uh, since we already had uh, an older version of the form, it was easier to create since uh, I knew already where to get the info and uh, the, uh, how to create the data connections and search filters. So what's interesting here is you're displaying um, something that's highlighted that's overdue, over a month due, and then you've got a different color for week. Uh, but there's nothing that's orange. It's in the middle. So there's different ways. It's very easy to add that coloring, right? Right. Yeah. Can you show us uh, how, you, how you did that? For the coloring, um, I uh, we yet need to have or add the uh, formatting rule here at the uh, repeating section. And here you can see the uh, logic which states that if days last modified is greater than 28 and the status is not closed or a status is not resolved, then it's going to highlight the uh, row in light red. Hey, you're still using Info Path Designer for these dashboards. That's amazing. Um, you want to show them how, you, how kind of the, the uh, tricks you did today with regards to the, I know you've got like three or four things you want to, to demo specifically. And then if, if anyone has questions, please don't hesitate to throw those in the comment area. Uh, or if you just got a comment. <laughs> um, Don, uh, um, what are those three main areas that you want to focus on? Sorry for interrupting. Okay, so um, for for the demo, I'd like to uh, show this other dashboard, which is the uh, simpler version of the uh, 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 support dashboard. So first one I'd like to show is the uh, data connections that we have over here. So for the parent table or the, uh, the, the storage location where I'm querying the data from is the uh, support tickets database. And for the uh, child data is the uh, history, or the DBXL history or the tickets history. So that's what's happening for the, that, uh, would, that would be the same as, as just querying a parent list and a child list if you're just querying SharePoint, right? Right, that's correct. So uh, it is similar to uh, querying a SharePoint library or list, and this is what you, you'll have for the data connection. So as you can see here, this is a, repeatable, uh, a repeating table. So here we have the uh, parent data and for the ticket history, you also have the same. Okay, so now that we have created the uh, data connections, the next thing that you have to do is lay out the uh, fields and, ta and tables onto the canvas. So for this one, um, I had to uh, lay out the uh, parent table first so instead of a repeating table, I did a repeating section over here and created a table inside it. So, so that's the static. Table. That's a static table. That's not a table that's bound to the data source in terms of the repeating part of it. It's just the static, right? Yes. So uh, to enter a, or to create a table, you have to go to the Insert tab and uh, go to the custom table and select the size of the table that, that you need for your form. Now, um, for this one, I've added a couple of columns and displayed the uh, fields here and added a collapse and expand button here. So for this one, we are using a, a picture button. So I created a an image and I uploaded it 
to the uh, resource files. So you can add them here. And once you've added them there, you can select on the button. And for the, select the uh, picture button properties and browse for the uh, image you've uploaded. Now, um, after doing the uh, parent table, I've inserted the uh, child section over here. So this section is still coming from the parent table, which is this one. So if you insert this one inside the repeating section as a section, it won't or it won't be a uh, repeating section anymore because it's already inside that. And this is needed in order to perform the hide and show logic for the collapsible sections since we are adding a hide and show uh, formatting rule here. So what's happening is that uh, whenever you select a row or a when you click on a uh, collapsible button it's it's setting this node, this form logic node over here, to the doc ID uh, which I've chosen because this one is the unique value for the row, and uh, because it's unique, it's going to be the only one, and it will not um, uh, create any conflict with the hide and show logic. So. Once you've set this child doc ID to the doc ID of the current row, it's going to expand this section since the logic for this section section is uh, it's going to be hidden if the uh, child doc ID is not equal to or, or the doc ID is not equal to the doc ID. Now um, inside this section. I've uh, copied the uh, other information from the parent table and inserted the section from the uh, ticket history, just this one. So uh, in this section, uh, I, I inserted this as a repeating table. So you can just drag and drop this anywhere here in the child section and select repeat table. So, so you've got a repeating section for the parent and then you've got a section for the parent inside of that repeating section that's bound to it um, and then you've got um, yet another table inside of that for the child table, is that right? Yes, that is correct. And it's only showing one child history at a time, is that correct? Is it is it yes. querying it just at, on demand or is it is it querying everything up front? It's querying the information on demand. Because um, uh, for for the for dashboards, it is important to have your uh, forms running fast on form load. So in order to do that, um, you shouldn't be querying uh, all the items on form load, but instead uh, add it somewhere wherein you can just click it and query the information. So for this one, when you are when we are expanding, I'm setting the. Uh, Query child node of the form logic to the doc ID value of the current row. So what's happening when I'm doing that is that it's querying the uh, dbxl history and it's looking for the ticket or uh, related tickets, related tickets to the uh, doc ID selected. So I'm setting this node over here to the uh, doc ID of the uh, current row and when it does that it creates this string filter which queries the uh, uh, DBXL and for when it you, queries the... Yeah, for those of you who don't know what our database accelerator is, uh, DBXL is a tool we first developed to help with projects to help streamline and reduce the cost of projects because it's we needed a generic to web services to integrate large-scale form processes with the database. Um, the SharePoint is just not a good place to store, uh, you know, more than 10 or 20 or a million documents in terms of uh, storage. 
So we want to use SQL to improve performance, and it does. It improves performance dramatically. The DBXL web service is a generic web service, so you can, you, you can sort of issue any query onto your database to get values back, and that's why you see this syntax that Don's showing, the query database concat syntax. Uh, that's, that's the generic syntax that you use, and we have a tool that allows you to build that, so you don't have to memorize the format. Um, so if you're looking at that query database string and thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? Well, we actually have a query builder that's built into the DBXL tool. And DBXL is great for, for processes, like I said, that have lots of data storage requirements um, or they need to be really super fast. Don? Thanks, Patrick. Okay, so um, once you're done, you can add some uh, aesthetic uh, adjustments to your form and uh, upload it upload it to forms viewer so here's what it looks like in pre in, in forms viewer so it's just a pretty simple dashboard so um, whenever you click on the tab over here it's going to create the data that is needed so for this one it's creating the, the tickets which are assigned to me and uh, uh, let's uh, expand this debug section. So for the current tab, it selected my tickets, and it's returning the uh, data which is uh, assigned to my uh, alias, which is Don Stephen. And uh, if you we click on this one, you're going to see that um, it. That's really fast. Yeah, it uh, populated this uh, query node here. So it it was looking for the uh, doc ID 28329, and it got this information right here, which is also this one from uh, for the ticket history. Thanks, Don. I think I want to try to wrap up our webinar. Um, anything else that you want to sh shout out or show them? terms of your, your demo. We're going to include a, a sample built on the training uh, dashboard uh, lab that includes this additional steps of expand collapse. It may not be available today. We'll conclude this sample today, but um, by next week we will send out another link for you. Uh, Don, Don, anything else uh, do you want to show? Um, for If you're querying more than uh, 100 items, uh, we can also have a pagination so that um, it's going to help speed up your form. So for this one, on form load, it uh, varied 128 items, and it's only showing 30 items per page. So um, this helps your form's perform performance be faster. So you add pagination too. Uh, can you show the filtering, or do you have that on the on the designer? Uh, filtering for which one? Like, like sorting and filtering. I guess we'll do that next week. Uh, we, we need to probably move to the, the next demo here. So thanks, Don. This is wonderful. And just if you're wondering, we will be fuzzing out all of the PII um, so that we don't share any of our customer information on YouTube. Um, so uh, sorry about that. We didn't really plan um, that part of the demo today to make sure we were hiding this stuff. Um, but we'll, we'll make sure that gets fuzzed out on the video. So the um, the next demo I'd like to show is sort of once you have a way to highlight, you know, a view for, for basically people to go to, for their everyday view they can go to to see, you know, how fast their, their stuff is running um, in terms of the action items that they have to focus on. We, we also need to look at things historically. So you need the day-to-day -day dashboard and you also need some way to improve the process that is not just focused on the moment. So here we have a Power BI preview for next week. Well, next week we'll show how to take a Power BI, uh, you know, the designer, and build a, a quick set of charts that, um, both in classic and modern, that uh, you know, show you some um, insights into your data. And this is really why we're doing. Uh, you know, so there's different time scales here, and, and, and the nice thing about this. Um, this solution is that you can search on, you can, you can click on people, and so, so Power BI's got a lot of wonderful things built into it that provide um, 
active filtering. So you can see there, I clicked on Joanne's name and it, it automatically filtered her down. And, and Kaudu also has this cool techniques like this reset button that automatically take you all the way back. So you've done a bunch of filtering, sometimes it's hard to get back to where you wanna be. This reset button is a nice addition we'll talk about next week. And with Power BI, you also have the ability to quickly just change dates and things like that. It's just a hugely powerful tool. And it's especially great when you're looking at trends over time. Uh, if you're trying to get your day-to-day -day stuff done, you know, obviously um, something tabular like Don was showing is really key. Uh, you're not so much interested in the numbers. You're just interested in trying to, to get stuff going faster. Um, but once you, you need to set back, uh, you need to look at things. You, you want charts and graphs and things that uh, um, are visual so you can quickly get the sense of where your process is, why your process is slow. And, and who it is that is um, holding things up. And that's what we, show, so we saw just a moment ago. We we're looking at the average days a ticket is open, the median days is open, and the max days. So if I change this to the last quarter, um, you'll see that you know, the person who has took, taken the most amount of time um, on average, right, because we're median, which is, I guess we want the we want the average really is Joanne. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see why. Maybe this this uh, what this doesn't show is that she might have been blocked by somebody else. And so we're going to have more detailed Power BI next week. Um, and of course, uh, Joanne may have been on vacation for a couple of those days because it was the summer. So who knows? We don't want to pick on her. But you can see that our support team here, what the average response is, and that's really kind of gives you an idea of well, if the current ticket that's causing all of your numbers to go bad is on Joanne's plate, then you've got some historical data that you can show her to say, hey, you've actually been pretty bad this quarter. Speed things up or let's address, let's figure out why, you know, and then fix it together. Um, so the pieces of the puzzle, so in order to do this demo um, lab that we're gonna send out and to, to build this into your dashboard, it really you just need four things. You need, you need to have a form process. So you need to have a process that you wanna measure. That's pretty obvious. Um, and then you need one of these tools. So you need, you need something to collect the data. That's your form technology, Kigabra Forms, Forms your, and then you need Forms your and Power BI to show the data, both on a daily basis, but also more historically as you're looking at things on a week to week thing to try to identify how to improve the process. Um, we will give you the sample from our webinar bit based on the sample from training two weeks ago um, that shows the de how, to, how to expand collapse. And you also need to be able to store the history somewhere, either in SQL or a SharePoint list that you can then query to get that service level metrics. Um, and uh, Don, do you want to talk about how you built this and, and kind of what the, the, the key steps are? Hey, Patrick. Um, uh, for uh, building um, dashboards, uh, key steps are creating the uh, query, uh, query data connections for the parent and child data. And then uh, as demo, you'd have to lay out the uh, dashboard fields and configure the uh, expand and collapse sections. And then you can also add the uh, filter query logic for searching terms and uh, the tabs. And lastly, um, configure the uh, hide and show logic for the uh, uh, child section. And you're, you're, you're filtering it on load just to show them exactly what's assigned to them, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for being here. Let's just see if we have any questions, Don, and uh, we'll quickly uh, do a shout out here at the end. So uh, Shane, um, Shane has Shane's comment, fantastic. I have to run to another meeting, um, but uh, I'll talk to you later. So um, yeah, th he's, he's thanking us for, for being inspired by his wonderful idea last week, but it's really thanks to, to Shane that we're doing this. Um, any other questions for us? I just want to quickly uh, quickly do our obligatory shout out here. Uh, we are um, building a, a very low cost way for you to let go of InfoPath, and that's Kudabra Forms. Recently uh, renamed, uh, you can't see this, my slides are bad, but the, uh, we've been calling our form technology forms viewer, and we still are. But soon we will be um, unleashing this new brand on everyone, Qdabra Forms, just to make it a little bit easier to remember. Forms viewer also has the word view in it, 
and Forms here actually does design and editing, and we're really happy that we're making progress on the Canvas editing, the layout editing in the browser this year, so that not only can you let go of InfoPath, but you can also let go of the InfoPath designer. Um, and hopefully by this, by, by January, February of next year, we've got um, that out. So you can start testing that and, and letting us know how you like it. We're going to basically make it look very similar so you have familiarity. Um, and we're going to add some new features and fix some issues with the, the old one. And there'll be a few things that are missing in V1, um, but we're working really hard on it. Thanks for your patience. Um, so, so QNet Reforms, Forms Viewer, is this uh, easy way, and that's because you don't have to change your format. It's backwards compatible. Um, but you get new things. We have mobile technology built into it. We're going to be doing webinars later this year on how to do voice assistance in your forms uh, via the browser. Um, we are also here to help you, and that's a key thing. In fact, next week marks our 16th anniversary. Uh, we started the company in uh, September of 2003, and uh, um, really happy that we've been around so long. And thanks to Don and everyone else in the team for keeping the, the shop humming. Um, we are going to be doing this webinar next week on Power BI, um, and I want to thank you all for being here and hope you can make it next week. But if not, don't forget, we'll upload this to YouTube minus the PII, and um, hope you have a great day. Take care. Thank you very much.